Hi everyone and welcome to the Fairly Cute channel. So before I get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has followed me within the last month. My channel has literally doubled in subscribers and I don't even know what to say. Um, it's been quite overwhelming, but I am genuinely really grateful to everyone. Um, so <laughs> thank you for subscribing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So I just wanted to say a quick thank you before we got into this video and also if you are watching this and you're not currently subscribed please subscribe it really does help out my channel it would really help me out and I would be so thankful okay let's get on with the video so like many fashions Lolita has its trends things become trendy and then they kind of lose popularity it's so normal and recently we've been seeing something that we have called the sweet boom. Now, a lot of people have probably seen this term come up in discourse online a few times. And I know that there are people who don't actually know what the term sweet boom means. So let me explain. So what exactly is the sweet boom? Is it a candy explosion? Should I be worried? Well, no and yes. <laughs> so before I get into why it may concern you, let me just define what it is first. The term sweet boom refers to the subsar Sweet Lolita and the boom in its popularity. Over the past few years, we've seen a resurgence in OTT Sweet and it has by far become the most popular substyle at the moment. I think Sweet has always kind of been quite popular. It's usually the style that people get into at first when they learn about Lolita and then they kind of move on to other substyles. But it's not really been the trendiest substyle for a while. I would definitely say that from when I started wearing the fashion in 2013 to around 2016, Sweet Lolita was actually very unpopular. Uh, especially this OTT sweet style was extremely unpopular. Instead, uh, OTT classic was the most popular substyle, which is really weird because no one talks about it now. I definitely like to talk about OTT classic, but I don't think I'll have time in this video. So I'll probably make another video talking about OTT classic because I think it's quite interesting how it just popped up one day and as quickly as it like became trendy, it just like disappeared from everyone's like style. <laughs> Who wears OTT classic now? But it was mad. People were literally wearing like ships on their head and like doing all kinds of crazy things. And I think it really influenced the other substyles at the time as well. So I totally like to make a video about that. But anyway, as I was saying, OTT Suite was very unpopular at this time. In fact, many of the sweet dresses that are super popular, like Sugary Carnival and Milky Planet, were looked down upon as they were kind of seen as stage play or fetish dresses. Which is incorrect. <laughs> when I first got into the fashion, as we all know, I got into it through Princess Peachy. I watched Princess Peachy's videos and she owned a replica of Toy Fantasy. It was literally <laughs> Toy Fantasy in white. It was the OP and I saw it and I fell in love and I decided that I needed that dress. And in 2015, I think, I managed to buy that dress and I felt so like shameful wearing that dress. Like I didn't really wear it to meetups because it felt so age play -y, and I thought that the other Lolitas would judge me for wearing it. And <laughs> so it literally, I think I wore it maybe twice. So between what, 2015 when I bought it and 2018, I wore it twice. Um, <laughs> and that's just because of the stigma behind it. A lot of people thought that those were prints that were not only kind of associated with age play, but also they were for newbie Lolitas. OTT Suite was a newbie kind of substyle. You wouldn't really wear 
this OTT cutesy style if you were a more seasoned Lolita. Now I don't know if that's how everyone felt across like the world, <laughs> but definitely I think in Europe that was the view that was held. However, luckily for people now, these dresses are seen in a completely different light. It almost seemed like overnight people started yearning for these late noughties, early 2010s AP print dresses. But was it actually sudden? Or had it been coming for a while? Now, that is something that I'm going to talk about in a minute, but I am getting ahead of myself. Because before we talk about how long this has been coming, I want to talk about what dresses are actually involved in this. And I don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of random. I, well, what I will say is it is kind of random. So we know that it includes dresses like Sugary Carnival, Milky Planet, uh, dreamy baby room, toy fantasy, toy parade, decoration dream, and some others as well, I'm sure. And a lot of non-printed kind of uh, cutesy fairy dresses. <laughs> I wanted to give these kinds of dresses a name in this video so that I could keep referring back to them. So I decided to call this style of sweet sugary sweet, simply because the most iconic print out of these is sugary carnival. So I tried to make a little flow chart <laughs> to like figure out if a dress could be deemed this sugary sweet style. So the idea was that you could put a dress kind of into the flow chart and you could find out whether it was part of this trend or not. Um, that failed. <laughs> There's just so much variation. Uh, when it comes to the prints, not so much, but when it comes to other items, there's a lot of, even with prints, I'm lying, with prints as well, this, I don't understand. I can't quite put a name to what the exact style is, but it's a feeling. It's kind of, you look at a dress and you're like, yeah, that would be part of it. And I couldn't, I try to define it. It's really hard to define. So this is where things get a little bit weird because I've named all those dresses. And basically what I have found is they have to be Wait, they have to be angelic pretty dresses. No dresses from other brands are part of this sweet boom. The second thing they need to be is either cotton or velveteen. If they are polyester, they aren't part of this. There are some dresses that are part of the sweet boom that don't fit this, but they're making my life difficult and I'm going to ignore them. <laughs> so the majority of dresses that are part of the sweet boom have to either be cotton or velveteen. And then past that, they need to have a certain color palette. So either those kind of light pastels that Sugary Carnival or Toy Fantasy have, or the bright pastels that Cotton Candy Shop has. If they're neither super light or super bright pastels, then they have to be rare or coveted dresses from the early 2010s or late noughties. And if they're not printed in the traditional way, they either have to have an applique on them or screen printed, and then they can be included. For example, Twinkle Mermaid. And if they are not printed at all and they don't have any appliques or anything, then I found that they need to have one of these three features. So they need to be either tiered, scalloped, or have some kind of tool lace on them. And by some kind, I mean like this kind of tool lace. <laughs> So it makes it all like puffy. <laughs> and still there are other dresses that are part of the sweet boom or I would consider to be part of the sweet boom if they were sold um, that don't fit that. But I found the majority of them have one of those three things. And then obviously there are other items affected by the sweet boom. So uh, jewelry, suddenly, <laughs> randomly, <laughs> Uh, Angelic Pretty's plastic jewellery has become very popular again. It definitely dipped in popularity uh, and they stopped making it as well. They were like, well, no one's buying this. So we're just going to stop selling it. And now it's super popular again and they're releasing their jewellery with pretty much every release. They have jewellery with it because it's doing so well. Socks as well. Oh my gosh. All of a sudden, everyone wants socks. Please stop selling your disgusting socks on lace market. I don't want to shame anyone. Please, if your socks are nasty, just don't sell them. It's okay. We don't need to see that. Don't buy nasty stained socks. It's so gross, guys. Can we just normalize not buying gross socks? Because it's so nasty. I will give you places to buy socks. Do you need to buy socks? 
They won't be angelic pretty, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you some socks. <laughs> I can I'll buy them for you. Do you want me to buy socks for you? I'll buy your socks for you. Please just stop buying those socks. Oh my gosh. And then also you have uh, non-main pieces. So like blouses and cut sews and parkas and things are also rising in price as long as they are pastel and they fit the release. So Milky Planet cut sews and things have risen in price. And then other... Uh, non main piece clothes are also going for higher prices so things like uh, old blouses those kind of cotton blouses with lots of bows on them are going for higher prices um cut sews as well and parkas and bags the pony bags used to go for so cheap and now they are going for so much money people did not want those pony bags in the past now all of a sudden people want those pony bags <laughs> i still don't want a pony bag <laughs> You'll never take me. <laughs> so those are the clothes that you're going to see in this sweet boom. And as I have said before, there is a boom in popularity, which means there's a boom in prices. Um, there's more demand for these items and a lot of them go on auction, which means people are going to bid quite high for them. And so we've seen extortionate prices basically for these items. However, because these clothes are so old, they are not always in great condition. And buying these clothes, you need to understand and accept that they are going to be damaged. For example, I bought this sugary carnival not that long ago, but it has quite a lot of fade to it. And I had to be okay with that. I did get it for quite, like, for like a normal price. I got it for like 200 quid. So I'm not too unhappy with it. It would have been nice to get it in 2016, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but I have seen things like damaged dresses go for over $400, which, honestly confuses me. Um, I don't think I would ever spend that much on something that is damaged. And as I already said, the socks. <laughs> Guys, we've got to stop buying these socks. If the Lolita community thinks that it's acceptable to sell such terrible quality socks, we are never going to get anything better, okay? But this is, that is all we are worth now, is just disgusting stained socks, and I don't particularly want to be a part of it. I think we need to stop. I'm calling this behavior out right now. <laughs> Let's end it. <laughs> So now we know what the sweet boom is and what uh, items it encompasses. Let's talk about why we have a sweet boom. So while I was writing out the script for this video, this was probably the hardest part to write. There are so many different reasons as to why this sweet boom might have happened. And I definitely don't think that I'm going to cover them all in this video. I don't even know if I have even considered every possibility, every factor that may have gone into creating the sweet boom, but I hope that I can cover the main ones. Um, at least I hope I have thought of at least the most obvious ones, the ones that have probably uh, made the most impact. So, <laughs> are we sitting comfortably? So as I said before, Lolita has always had its trend cycles. OTT Classic, old school and now OTT sweet. <laughs> but honestly there has not been anything quite like this sweet boom. Dresses are going for like over a thousand dollars which just I mean unless it's like Puppet Circus or Iron Gate that's just not normal for these dresses and especially dresses like Milky Planet and Sugary Carnival although they have been more uh, coveted prints and like wardrobe staples um, they've not really gone for this much before. So it is completely unique in the way that dresses are going for so much money. There has never even been a trend like this before. However, we have seen Sweet Lolita, this style of Sweet Lolita, become very popular in the past. In 2009 to 2010, prints like Sugary Carnival were actually going for around $500. This style of OTT suite 
was super popular at that time. This is around the time that we started getting things like AP clones and coloured hair and those twin tails started to come into the fashion. So I think a lot of people were super excited to try out this new kind of OTT suite style because there hadn't really been anything like this in the past. But 2020 and 2009 aren't the only times that the prices for these sugary sweet dresses started to rise. Also, <laughs> in 2017, the prices started to rise again. It had actually been decreasing steadily down to 2016 when it had quite a big dip. And then in 2017, again, the prices started to rise up and up and up and up until we got our sweet boom. So we have three key years there. We have 2009, 2017, and 2020. Bar 2020, in which everything happened in the same year, something big actually happened uh, in the year before each of those years. So in 2008, we had the financial crisis, we had the global economic crisis. And in 2016, does anyone remember 2016? Do we want to remember 2016? So we saw something terrible happen the years previous to the years that Sweet Rose. Uh, except for 2020, which I think actually was the worst out of the three. And uh, I, I think people just jumped on it. People just needed sweet really badly. <laughs> but also I think people had more time. So there's a lot of factors going into why 2020 is slightly different. Uh, I think because everyone was at home, people could just kind of get started and do what they wanted to do faster. So why am I talking about these bad years and what do they have to do with Sweet Lolita? It has been charted quite a few times that uh, in times of economic crisis, something weird happens within fashion. Heel height increases. I think a lot of people know about this. I actually didn't know about this beforehand um, and my friend pointed it out to me that this could be something similar happening within the Lolita community. Not only does heel height go up, but my best friend actually studied this for her degree and she talked about how uh, people find new fashions during these times. Cottagecore, anyone? Strawberry dress, anyone? Hmm? <laughs> Cottagecore was a style created as a means of escape. The idea behind it was to create a simple and beautiful life. Most of us couldn't leave the house and a lot of people didn't have gardens and Cottage Girl gave you that fantasy. This phenomenon has actually been so well documented within the fashion industry. I'm pretty sure they saw it coming. Everyone probably had Cottage Girl like ready to go. All the fast fashion brands are like, right, <sighs> now's our time. <laughs> An IBM consumer products expert, Dr. Trevor Davis actually said, that consumers turn to a more flamboyant fashion as a means of fantasy and escape during times of financial crisis. Sweet Lolita is by far the most fantastical substyle within the fashion. It's filled with, literally filled with like clouds, ponies, uh, ice cream palaces. <laughs> I don't know. If you look at APs, brand concept. It's all about being a princess. And so it almost makes sense that people kind of latched onto Sweet Lolita uh, in 2020. So even though no one really talks about it within the Lolita community, it's really not a surprise that during times of financial crisis, uh, the community actually turns towards Sweet Lolita and more people start to wear it. Anyway, that explains why the 2020 Sweet Boom happened. Or does it? Yes, the world was, and still is, suffering from financial crisis. But uh, that's not the whole story, <laughs> is it, Angelic Pretty? Hmm? You see, AP decided to stop making cotton prints. In the late 2010s, they decided to move their focus from the dresses that made the brand uh, and turn towards dresses that were dresses, I guess. <laughs> I hate AP Poly. <laughs> they changed their main dress material to polyester as they said that a lot of Lolitas were struggling with extremely full wardrobes and making dresses in polyester freed up space because polyester dresses squish down better than cotton ones, which is true. But I don't care. 
But anyway, it seemed to be a pretty good business move as Angelic Pretty releases would sell out from time to time and actually the more they kind of got into it, the faster their dresses would sell out and 2019, even 2020 was, they, I mean, they were bad years, but their dresses sold out. So clearly people were buying. So obviously they were very popular at this time. Or were there just more Lolitas buying? I don't actually think that they were selling out because their dresses were filling a gap in the market or their dresses were satisfying customers <laughs> or anything. I simply think their dresses were selling out because there were more people wearing Lolita. Um, during the late 2010s, Lolita boomed in China. So many people started wearing Lolita in China and um, the majority of orders, I want to say, were probably going to the Lilitas in China. It's the only factor I can think that may have changed, is just the amount of people buying from AP. And for a while, everyone was like, well, it is what it is. Clearly it's popular. People want to buy this. So, meh, AP's clearly gone in a different direction, but what can you do? To people getting very angry. <laughs> people started to get really irritated. They wanted their cotton prints back. A lot of people were saying, well, that's it. I'm never buying from AP ever again because they're doing polyester and their style has changed and I don't like the new style. I want the old style of dresses. I want things like Sugary Carnival again. Will we ever have something like Sugary Carnival again? Probably not. <laughs> And the more people became unhappy with Angelic Pretty, the more they talked about it, and the more other people heard their points of views, and the more they became unhappy, and then the more they talked about it, until a lot of people were unhappy. And the more people that were unhappy, uh, the less people buying new from AP, and the more people buying secondhand, late noughties, and early 2010 cotton prints. <laughs> We can see this happening when we look at the average prices of uh, these sugary sweet angelic pretty dresses. I charted the, the price of sugary carnival over several years on lace market and the prices of toy fantasy over several years on lace market and they both had the same trend. They had a dip in 2016 and then a steady increase in prices up until 2019 and then it kind of just goes became a mess after that. Sugary sweet OTT dresses were becoming very popular. And the more popular they became, the higher their prices rose. And so that's another reason as to why we have the sweet boom. But that's not it. There's still another reason. Auctions and stimulus checks. <laughs> this sweet boom is really similar to the 2009-2010 sweet boom, but with one key difference, the insane prices. The very nature of lace market allows uh, for prices to raise this high. We have auctions on lace market and um, the way that auctions work, you can bid an insanely high amount and it will only get put up when other people bid. So you can bid a really high price and people still can't like outbid you. And so what this basically does is pushes up the price of auctions really high. Because if one person comes along and they're like, oh, well, the maximum I'm willing to spend on this is $300. Uh, and it's something that's going for like $50, then obviously that person could just put in 51 and it goes up to 51, but that person's put in 300. So then when the next person comes along and they're like, oh, the max that I would spend on this is $200 and they put in 200, suddenly the auction has gone up from $50 to $200 <laughs> and there's still another hundred on there before that person gets outbid. So there can be these massive jumps in prices in auctions and honestly, I, it's a style of auction that is used now across the board. eBay does it, Lace Market does it. It's just how auctions run now. But yes, it lends itself irritatingly well to these insane high prices. Before Lace Market, we didn't really have this. We had Facebook sales and we had the EGL com sales. And you could leave offers on those, but offers would usually be made in private so no one else could see them. There wasn't really a bidding kind of thing happening it was just 
either you buy a price or you give an offer and that person's like, yeah, I'll take your offer or no, I won't take your offer. So selling was very different before. But on top of these auctions on Nays Market, people were getting stimulus checks. And if you don't know what stimulus checks are, which I didn't fully understand what they were either, they're sums of money that the US government gives out to US taxpayers in times of financial crisis in order to boost the economy. The idea is that they give them this sum of money and they're like, oh, spend the money to boost our economy and then you spend the money to boost their economy. Sorry, I hit the microphone. So what do these stimulus checks have to do with bidding and the sweet boom? Well, a lot of people when receiving these stimulus checks would go and spend them on Lolita straight away. And obviously you had people who were just buying things at normal price. Oh, I've gotten $1,400 from the US. I'm going to go and buy seven dresses with that. And then you had people who desperately wanted Milky Planet to the point where they would put their whole stimulus check onto one auction. I am judging, yes. And so, as I said before, the way that auctions work on lace market lends itself very nicely to the increase of prices. So, <laughs> what you start to see were people making their max bid, these full stimulus check, so it was like $800 the first time, I think, was it $800? I don't remember. And then $1,400 the second time. And they would just leave it there and let other people bid up to that same amount. Now, I think the idea was that no one was going to spend over that amount. No one else would spend over that amount on the auctions. And therefore, putting your whole stimulus check on it wasn't really... You weren't saying, oh yeah, I would pay... $1,400 for this disgusting dress. Oh, <laughs> this extremely stained, no, they were, they were in good condition. But it was more, uh, I am willing to put this money down. If it gets to this point, I will have to pay it, but I don't think that anyone will pay up to this much. So I've basically secured this dress and I don't have to think about this auction anymore. But all that did was really just raise the prices to extreme amounts. So people would literally be bidding up to a thousand dollars. And once it gets past that, I think other people would probably give up and be like, well, it's too much money. And so you would end up with people paying over a thousand dollars for a dress that is not worth that much. So I think that's a massive contributor to the sweet boom. Had the USA not have given out these stimulus checks, I don't think we would have seen this. So I've given three reasons as to why the sweet boom may have happened. And I've got one more reason, and it's actually a pretty straightforward reason. Instagram and TikTok. I have found over the years that Sweet Lolita tends to get the most reach on Instagram. Uh, I guess it really pops on the screen. A lot of people who don't wear Lolita are most interested in Sweet Lolita and are most likely to be captivated by Sweet Lolita. And so the majority of Lolita content that Instagram really pushes because of how well it does is Sweet Lolita. It's, it's, it's Sweet Lolita content creators. So when people first see the fashion, and they're like, oh, I like that fashion. I want to get into that fashion. It's most likely that what they have seen is Sweet Lolita. And I think it's always been the case that when people come into the fashion, the first substyle they really get into is Sweet Lolita, but then they tend to mature out of it quite quickly. But because Instagram is such a massive part of Lolita nowadays, and because we are all fame hungry and <laughs> joking. And because Instagram is such a massive part of everyone's lives nowadays, um, and a lot of people do like getting likes and follows and uh, impressions, and they do like interaction on their social media, uh, a lot of people tend to stick with Sweet Lolita, especially if you're getting like a lot of affirmation for what you're wearing. You're not exactly going to be like, right, people really like it when I wear Sweet Lolita. I'm going to wear classic now. <laughs> so people aren't really maturing out of Sweet Lolita. And then you have a lot of people coming into the fashion. It was a lot harder to find out about the fashion in the past. Now it's fairly easy, especially with the rise of uh, Western alternative styles. Um, there's quite a lot of overlap between Harajuku fashion and uh, these Western alt styles because 
West stole it from Harajuku. <laughs> cough, cough, cough. <laughs> and so the reach that Harajuku fashion gets now is a lot more than it was in the past. On top of that, TikTok has also become extremely popular in the last two years. And because of the way that TikTok works, you get a whole range of different kinds of content. You're not only going to get one kind of content on TikTok. Sometimes if you watch content from someone who's like doing their makeup, um, like alternative makeup, then the next one you might get maybe a Lolita content creator because it's also alternative. And so it does kind of make that connection. Um, so a lot more people have been exposed to Lolita fashion through TikTok. So I genuinely think that because of social media, more people have been exposed to Sweet Lolita and therefore more people are wearing Sweet Lolita. There's just a lot more people within the Lolita community who are wearing Sweet Lolita. The proportions are off. Uh, there is no balance anymore. The Lolita community is on fire. We're all going to die and we're all going to be wearing Sweet when we die. Anyway, I just wanted to take this time to say hi. <laughs> hi new lolitas hi new sweet lolitas how are we doing we good we good get out of my fashion <laughs> so now i've talked about what the sweet boom is and why it's possibly happening let's talk about who it affects so you'll probably think that i'm just gonna say oh it affects sweet lolitas and here's how and that's it but i genuinely think that it affects a lot of people maybe not to the same degree. And so I'm gonna start off by like the least affected through to the most affected people. Let's just talk about people, guys. <laughs> Let's just talk about people and their feelings, okay? <laughs> so I think more than anything, people who aren't wearing Sweet Lolita <laughs> are just so tired about how we just keep going on about this sweet boom. And they're like, well, glad it's not us, but shut up. <laughs> so to you people, I would just like to say, no, I won't. I will not shut up. It's very irritating to me that the prices are this high and I will talk about it and I will talk about it until they are not high anymore. And if you want the prices to go down, then you just make them go down, make them go down and then I'll stop talking about it, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand people are quite irritated about this discourse and obviously it doesn't affect a lot of people and so they don't really like the fact that it keeps coming back to the sweet boom this, sweet boom that and everyone's kind of complaining about it and they're like well it's just the prices deal with it oh my gosh why are you acting like this just pay the money if you can't afford it then don't buy it oh, meh, meh. <laughs> shut up <laughs> I, I got a bit ranty there i don't know what happened to me <laughs> um what was i saying i don't know i'm sorry i don't know what just happened i don't know what kind of demon just came out of me <laughs> i totally understand that you are tired of hearing about it but I think it's important to talk about the sweet boom because this isn't normal and a lot of people coming into this fashion think that these prices are normal and they're not normal and we shouldn't normalize these prices because a 10 year old faded dress is not worth 800 pounds it's just not worth it your disgusting socks are not worth a hundred dollars your disgusting pair of disgusting stained socks with a hole in them is not worth a hundred dollars. Stop buying them for that price. They're not worth it, guys. They're not worth it. They're not even worth half the price. They're not even worth twenty dollars, mate. Throw them in the trash. Throw them in the bin. Get rid of them. I don't know. Make them into a hair tie. I don't know. Don't don't tell someone else to put them on their feet. <laughs> I just spat. I'm so infuriated. So I am really sorry, but at the same time, I'm not sorry, and we're going to keep complaining about it. I think in general, though, everyone, including a lot of sweet elites, are just growing a bit tired of the same coordinates over and over again. Just OTT sweet, OTT sweet, OTT sweet. And I know for certain that I'm growing quite tired of it myself. OTT classic, your time is coming. You better watch out, you Victorian maidens and you innocent worlds, we're coming for you. But I genuinely think that we are seeing a lot of people just get really bored with OTT Suite. And I don't think that it's an insane amount of people right now. But I think what we'll start to see in maybe the next year 
or so are people uh, getting quite bored with it and changing their style from sweet to classical gothic and then denouncing sweet and then saying that toy fantasy and all those prints were age play and uh, we'll just continue the cycle over again. Enough of messing around a little bit, those points, I mean, I was just dragging people through the dirt there. Um, genuinely, I do think that this most greatly affects new Lolitas. As I said before, a lot of people are getting into this fashion through Sweet Lolita. Sweet Lolita is the first substyle that they are exposed to, and it is the one that most want to wear. But when they see the prices, a lot of new Lolitas don't think that they would be able to afford it, or they are putting down the money for these dresses because they feel that that is what they are worth, when actually they're not worth that much, and in a few years time, the price will have reduced dramatically. All this sweet boom is doing for these new Lolitas is sucking their money away. It's it's really just taking their money. And I feel that within the Lolita community, we have this idea that yes, when you buy a dress, you are paying money for that, but also you can get that money back in the future. It's an investment. But when you're buying a dress for £600 and it's already faded, it's missing its waist ties, it's got some stains on it, you will not be able to resell it in a few years time for that same price. <laughs> you are literally throwing money down the toilet, that's what I'm trying to say. The prices are going to reduce dramatically and you are, if you are buying at these prices, you are going to lose out on money and I think a lot of us understand that. I do understand that. I bought this Sugary Carnival at £200 and I know that if I was to sell it in the future, I probably wouldn't get that amount for it. And I'm okay because it's something that I really wanted to get. It's a dress that I really wanted. But when you come into these fashion for the first, when you come into this fashion for the first time, a lot of people say, well, if you buy brand secondhand, uh, it's an investment. Brand is an investment. Um, it's not really a waste of money. You can sell it again uh, for the same amount. But with the sweet boom, you can't. You're buying it at an extreme markup and you will only be able to sell it for a fraction of the price. We are already seeing these prices stagnate. These dresses aren't selling anymore. Stimulus checks have run out, people. <laughs> no one's got any money again. <laughs> and so if you bought a dress for $1,000, you may only be able to sell that dress for a hundred dollars. I am not joking. I am not exaggerating. <laughs> I'm being serious. And so I think it's extremely important to let newer Lolitas know this. If you are looking to get that money back in the future, do not buy these dresses now. Wait. If you are new to the fashion and you are young, you have time. I think a lot of older Lolitas are kind of feeling time ticking. They're like, oh, I'm approaching my 30s, <laughs> at least for me. I, don't know. I think a lot of people are either in their 30s or approaching their 30s and they are feeling that uh, their time in Sweet Lolita is coming to an end. It has a time limit for a lot of people. Um, it is a personal time limit. Obviously, you can wear Lolita for as, as long as you want, as, lo as old as you are. It does not matter, but I think a lot of people have a personal time limit. I know I definitely have a personal time limit. I'm not sure when my time will be up, but I don't think that Sweet Lolita is something I'm going to wear forever. I don't really see myself wearing it for the rest of my life. And so I think a lot of old Lolitas are thinking, oh, I want this dress. It's extremely expensive. Uh, I know I don't have that much longer left in wearing Sweet Lolita, so I'll buy it and I'll enjoy it. Or they're looking at these dresses and they're like, I'm not gonna be able to afford that dress. I've only got maybe a good five more years left in the fashion. Am I gonna really be able to buy it? Like in five years time? Like, no. <laughs> so I forgot what point I was making. <laughs> it's just bad all round. <laughs> so I think for older Lolitas, we don't really have the same amount of time that a lot of newer, younger Lolitas do. But if you are young, if you are just getting to this fashion, if you're like 14, 16, 17, 18, then you've got time, even 19, 20, 21, 22, <laughs> 23. <laughs>
24, 25. Even I've got time. That's not I've got time too. <laughs> We've all got time. <laughs> I think I'll still wear this in like 10 years time, to be fair. Um, <laughs> might not though, who knows? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is if you are young, if you are new, you have time. And you do not need to buy these dresses at an insane markup. So I genuinely think that the sweet boom is negatively impacting newer Lilitas the most. They haven't been in the community long enough to understand that these prices are not normal and they are losing out on money. That being said, there are certain groups of people benefiting from the sweet boom. Brands. Brands are seriously benefiting and I don't mean this as a bad thing at all. A lot of Chinese brands have been bringing out uh, OTT suite very like reminiscent of the early 2010s suite style and have been really profiting off that and they've really been growing and that's great to see as well as a lot of western indie brands as well i actually bought an apron which i'm pretty sure everyone knows about now i keep shouting about it it's a really good apron from the american uh, brand coco kuma and I love that apron with all of my life. <laughs> it is the best apron ever. <laughs> so brands are definitely making a lot more money. And also obviously the Japanese brands, AP is making a lot of money at the moment. It's actually having its 20th anniversary this year. So they're re-releasing a lot of their old prints. I'm sure everyone knows they've re-released Sugary Carnival as a made to order. And they're also releasing Candy Fairy and Nakayoshi Bunny. And then they've just been, you know, doing the most. So, a lot of socks, a lot of plastic jewellery, uh, cute blouses, dresses as well, I forgot, yeah, they've also been doing dresses. <laughs> we also have a lot of second-hand sellers who have been profiting off this. Congratulations, congratulations, you set something at a small bid and it, it got increased dramatically. What, you put that Milky Planet up for $150 and it ended up getting $3 million or something? I don't know. <laughs> congratulations! Woo! Congratulations, congratulations. However, also scalpers. Unfortunately, we have to <laughs> talk about scalpers. <laughs> um, so a lot of people have been buying these dresses from other platforms just to resell them in the west because they know how much they will go for here and well get that money what can i say like <laughs> get that money but also you're doing a bad thing so and i shouldn't have to explain why you're doing that bad thing but scalpers ruin markets so if you think that someone is scalping or if you have proof that someone is scalping do not buy from that seller because all you are doing by buying from them is allowing them to basically ruin the market and make the prices go up and they don't really care about if people can afford it or whatnot they just care about getting their sh money but just because something's selling for a lot of money it doesn't mean that it is scalpers it could just have gotten a really high auction price it could genuinely just be someone just selling that old deleter it's quite hard to tell with this normally you can tell scalpers because they're buying like new releases and then reselling them for like double the price but when it comes to these already secondhand dresses it's quite hard to tell who's scalping and who's just selling their dress but just be on the lookout <laughs> so now i've talked about who is affected i'm sure everyone who is affected is like well that's great thanks for telling me that i'm affected and that i shouldn't buy it anymore but will i ever be able to buy it in the future <laughs> can i buy these dresses in the future will the sweet boom end so i think a fear that a lot of people have is Will this be the price of sugary sweet forever? Is this just the price I must pay for my darling sugary carnival and milky planet? Well, no, we've already seen with sugary carnival, the prices are going down because of the made to order. But also, <laughs> I am the bearer of good news. And by good news, I mean probably good news. <laughs> These prices are not sustainable as they are. And so, good news, I see the prices going down in the future. I can say with absolute certainty that the prices will drop again in the future. I just don't know when. If we look at the 2009 boom, the prices actually started dropping 
by 2011 and by 2013 they were half the price they were at the height of the boom. Three years after that, so 2016, we saw dresses actually reach the lowest ever with prices like this and like this and I just wonder why I wasn't buying these dresses at this point. So my prediction is, is that we will start to see a price drop in 2022. That is only next year, as long as things go back to normal this year. If things don't go back to normal this year, we may still see that price drop in 2022, or we'll probably see it in 2023. 2024 will be fairly cheap. We'll see dresses for maybe half the price, 2024, 2025-ish time. And then mark your calendars for 2027 because it will be extremely cheap if it goes along the same uh, pattern as it did last time. However, I genuinely think this all depends on if our economy stays good, um, if we have another economic crisis. <laughs> I think that the other factors that have impacted it um, wouldn't impact it again so soon. But I do think that if we have another like financial crisis, then that might impact it. So to reiterate, prices will drop in 2022. Then by 2024, they'll be half the price that they are now. And 2027, they'll be just a fraction of the cost. So if you can wait until 2027 to buy your dresses, then I would wait until then. But also, everything that I am saying is speculation, and it may not happen, and so don't listen to me, but that is my hypothesis. <laughs> so some of us may be waiting a few years to get out of a sweet fix, but if you don't want to wait that long, is there something else you can do? So whether you want to wear OTT Suite or not, there is something you can do. Do not lose hope. Don't worry, you're not gonna have to save for 5,000 years just to buy one dress. We'll get through this. If you've only been introduced to OTT Suite Lolita, there are so many other styles to choose from. There's gothic, classic, old school. Even within Suite, there's so many styles as well. You have country, you have a much more toned down, normal Suite. You have modern Suite, which is this late 2010 Suite. And you can even do casual. There are so many different kinds of Suite you can wear. Even buying from other brands can change the style of Suite that you're wearing. Baby Suite is very different to Angelic Pretty Suite, which is very different to Meta Suite. They're all very different and they are all good and pretty and beautiful. And you'll find that buying from these other brands, even though they're not so heavily sought after and not as trendy at the moment, are gonna be so much cheaper and are also going to create amazing styles. So if you're dead set on doing sweet, you don't have to do this one specific kind of sweet just because it's trendy right now. I think it's also important to really broaden the kinds of Lolita that you're looking at. So I'm going to put a few Lolitas up on the screen who do different styles. They don't rely on that like OTT AP suite style. And I will put all of their accounts in the description box down below so you can go and check them out. I just want to show you that there are so many different styles that you can wear. There's so much experimentation that can happen within this fashion. There's so much choice as well within this fashion. So go and check all of these people out. Yay. <laughs> and on top of that, make sure you're following hashtags like Classic Lolita, Gothic Lolita, Old School Lolita, uh, Casual Lolita, just all the different hashtags so that you get a range of styles. But if you really, really want to partake in OTT Suite Lolita and you don't want to pay the extreme prices that people have to pay right now, of course there are things that you can do. As I said before, the Sweet Boom has been great for Chinese brands. They have produced a lot of dresses that are very similar to this AP OTT Suite style. CC Cat is a brand that has just been churning out item after item after item. They're amazing. They do a whole range of items. They recently brought out that dollhouse dress that a lot of people own. Um, it's super cute, super pastel. To be fair, not my style, but... <laughs>
<laughs> a lot of people like it. I don't, but a lot of people do. It's pastel. It's that, it's that light pastel that everyone loves. It's got those beautiful, super soft pastel colors. It is made of polyester, so it doesn't quite fit, but there are also a lot of cotton dresses as well that do fit. So <laughs> I'm going to find a range of dresses on Taobao that currently are in their reservation period. What I will probably do is post links to dresses that fit this style that um, are on the Chinese Elite Updates Facebook page because you can actually order those dresses straight through them. So I've pretty much done all the work for you. Literally just got to like message and be like, I want this dress and I'll make sure that when I post this, they are all within the reservation period, so you can get those dresses. Obviously, you can also just check places like Devil Inspired and Clobber Online. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of resellers. I like to buy things through a shopping service. Um, I think resellers do mark up quite a bit. On top of that, the majority of OTT accessories actually come from China as well. They're bunny ears if you want them. There are so many on Taobao. There are so many and you don't have to reserve or anything. I will just try and find some and link them down below. Uh, wrist cuffs are the same. Blouses, you want blouses? I can get you blouses. So I will try and link as much down in the description box as possible. Um, if I can't, I might just put everything into a spreadsheet and then let you just peruse to your heart's content through there. But just know that if you want to partake in OTT Suite, you can. You may not be able to buy these extremely sought after angelic pretty prints right now, but one day you will. One day they will go for dirt cheap, I promise. <laughs> but for now, you may have to stick to cheaper options and that's absolutely okay. I don't see why it would be a bad thing. They're really nice dresses. There's some amazing dresses. I will say though that if you are dead set on buying these angelic pretty prints, then if you have the money, go for it. But all I will say is make sure that you are not buying a dress that is marked up beyond the normal market price right now. I would try and keep the amount that you're spending around like $300 for these dresses and nothing more. The reason I say this is because there are people who are taking advantage of this and it's only going to harm the community in the future. If we let scalpers win, then we lose. <laughs> this is a war on scalpers, guys. The problem with buying it at a marked up price, so something like $600, or even I've even seen things going up for like $800, the problem with buying things at that price is that that is not normal and that these clothes honestly are not worth that much. They are not worth that much. These clothes just aren't rare enough for them to be worth that much. But also on top of that, there is such a significant chance that these items will be uh, re-released from by Angelic Pretty in the future. We've already seen some of them be re-released. Toy Fantasy was re-released. Sugary Carnival was re-released. So there is quite a high chance that other prints like Milky Planet and uh, some of the other prints are also going to get a re-release. So try not to buy at marked up prices. It's kind of the same idea as scalping. Don't buy from scalpers because it only harms the community. Um, and it upsets the market. And then also just make sure you bid within reason. You are not going to die if you don't get that dress. It is fine. So I got a few other questions uh, on Instagram and I haven't actually answered them because I couldn't quite fit them into the four categories that I made here. Um, so someone asked, uh, how can they be a Lolita without interacting with the community? How to just live your life as a Lolita without interacting with the community? And I was thinking about doing a video on this, but actually Lord just released a video talking about why people leave Lolita and it kind of encompasses honestly that, like how you can just not interact with the community. If you would like me to make a video on that though separately, if you think there's more to talk about, then let me know. Obviously, very happy to talk about that. It is a passionate subject of mine. <laughs> Seeing how annoying and irritating the community can be. Not you guys though. <laughs> uh, not you guys. You guys are awesome. Anyway, someone else also asked what trends I would like to see come back. None of them. 
they can all rot for all I care. Honestly, OTT Suite was the trend that I wanted to see come back. And now that it's come back, I don't really want anything to do with it. And so I denounce OTT Suite, for I am to be a filthy casual. Gone are the days of wearing three headphones and animal ears. Casual Sarah has been born and she looks... Yeah, I'm just joking guys, I'm still gonna wear OTT. It was, it was a bit. I'm not gonna stop wearing OTT. Um, I'm just gonna wear it less frequently now and I'm gonna start buying a lot of Innocent World because it's so cheap. I got a dress for like 30 quid. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing. And I will see you again in my next video. Bye. <laughs>